Thanks for tuning in to BTWN News. It's June 17, 2022. My name's Tim. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. Wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if I hit 100,000 subscribers? That's what we're aiming for. And to please the Lord and to edify and entertain you, the saints. Uh, MacArthur recounts the effects of personal and ministry trials. That's the title and thumbnail of a video that's going to drop tomorrow, and I know you will enjoy it if you love Jesus, if you appreciate Pastor John, if you're saved, if you've ever been through a trial. That's all of you. <laughs> um, you're going to like that video. So uh, be looking for that. This video is uh, God Doesn't Need the SBC. That's what Vody says. And uh, on this thumbnail, we also have um, Rick Warren and Al Mohler, right? Those are the characters that are in this thumbnail. And I've got quite a few things to talk about, some things I can play for you. I've got a video of uh, both of those men. Um, I'm going to play part of that. And then I'm going to read you some quotes from John MacArthur. John MacArthur wasn't at the Southern Baptist Convention, but before the Southern Baptist Convention, there was a conservative Baptist convention that Pastor John did go to. And uh, John's not a big focus of this video, but I will have some quotes from him uh, later on in the video. Uh, all over the news, Saddleback female pastor debate raises bigger questions for the SBC. Rick Warren is... Um, pastor of the biggest church in the Southern Baptist Convention. He has compromised on many, many levels. And the latest is he ordained some women in his church to be pastors. And the way he justifies that, if I can just say it in a really quick nutshell, is there's the gift of pastoring and then there's the position of the pastor. And he ordained women because they had the gift of pastoring. And now there's some wordplay going on in the SBC. Uh, the SBC used to be one of the most conservative, solid denominations that I ever, ever heard of growing up as a young uh, Bible club missionary with Word of Life Bible clubs. Whenever I sat down with a Southern Baptist Convention church pastor, I knew it, and he's very conservative. And the organization that I worked for, they were they were concerned about us being too liberal, and we weren't allowed to go to movies, play cards, dance, no rock music, all that stuff. And the Southern Baptists, they they were just as conservative, if not more, than the organization that I worked for. So I want to play for you, Rick Warren. Uh, who thinks that he's going to get kicked out of the Southern Baptist Convention? The newsbreaker, um, he uh, he's not getting kicked out, at least not yet. So I'm going to play a clip for you uh, of Rick Warren speaking from the floor. And uh, but before I do, let me tell you about this event, the Builder Summit. The fourth annual Builder Summit will be November 11, 12, and 13. Many of you came last year just because you watched me on this YouTube channel. It was a great blessing to meet you and fellowship with you. Lord willing, more of you will come this year. The special speaker this year is Mike Abendroth uh, from No Compromise Radio, uh, uh, someone who's really ministered to me, an author, a preacher, a professor, um, great man of God <coughs> who will minister to all of us. I'm really looking forward to it. Put that on your calendar. Registration is opening soon. Here's Rick Warren. Um, this is from the convention. And uh, he got up and uh, had some statements. He's getting up and um, he thinks that this is going to be his last time talking to the SBC and last part of being part of the SBC. I recognize you to speak. Thank you. You know, um, first, everybody, welcome to Orange County, Southern Baptist, of 149 Southern Baptist churches here. 90 of them started by Saddleback Church. Wow. You know, it's customary um, for uh, a guy. Okay, when I review these, I speed it up. I want to I wanna slow it down. 
to regular speed. That's That was 1.75. All right, so he starts out by introducing himself as the, uh, the pastor who started a whole lot of churches in the area. I was about to be hung at Saddleback Church. Wow. There we go. You know, um, first, everybody welcome to Orange County, Southern Baptist of 149 Southern Baptist churches here. 90 of them started by Saddleback Church. Wow. You know, it's customary um, for a, a guy who's about to be hung to let him say his dying words. <laughs> I have no intention of defending myself. I have taught my kids and grandkids for years. I am most like Christ when I refuse to defend myself. All right. And surprisingly, folks, that's not where the video ends. This man just said, I am most like Christ when I don't defend myself. Okay, sit down. You're done. Sit down. Rick, sit down. Don't say anything else. Don't defend yourself. Do not say a word. Or you're a hypocrite. You're a huge hypocrite. Don't defend yourself. Sit down. Don't say anything. Be like Christ. That didn't happen. The Bible says Jesus spoke not a word unto them when Pilate accused him of all kinds of things. So I have no intention. Uh, I have most. Not a word. Not a word. Do not say a word in defense of your ordaining women pastors. Don't. I'll give you on my mailing list anyway, and I can write you and tell you what I believe about the gift of pastoring as opposite from the office of pastoring. There's a gift of pastoring, and then there's the office of pastoring. That's how he got around it. He's justifying uh, ordaining women because there's a gift of pastoring, which you can be a pastor because you've got the gift, and then there's the office of pastor. But we're just going to call them pastors, and we're going to ordain women. But I'm not here to talk about that. Lunchtime, I wrote you a love letter, and I'd like for my possibly likely last convention to read it to you. Kay and I could have not built Saddleback Church to its size and influence in any other denomination. I love Southern Baptist. I am a fourth generation Southern Baptist pastor. My great grandfather was I. led to Christ by Charles Spurgeon <laughs> and sent to America as a church planter. Saddleback was sponsored by the North American Mission Board. I served on the staff of the California State Convention. Why is he sharing his credentials? Why is he puffing himself up? I did this. I did this. I did this. And the Texas State Convention, as a teenager, Billy Graham picked me up when I was 18 and for the next 52 years mentored me because I started at 16 years old, hired by the California Convention to preach youth revivals, and I had preached over 120 uh, harvest crusades before I was 20. Billy took this long-haired, skinny Californian and mentored me for the next 52 years. Here's my love letter to you. All this boasting cloaked in a love letter. Because I really am grateful. If this is my last con I'm so thankful <laughs> because of Southern Baptist polity, I was allowed to serve one church for life. That's not possible in most denominations. And, get, grew, and grew it to become the largest church in this convention. Because Southern Baptist gave me a passion for evangelism and mission, we baptized 56,631 new believers. And as a Southern Baptist Church sent 26,869 members overseas to 197 nations. Because Southern Baptist taught me the value of a membership covenant, 78,157 members of our church signed our membership covenant after taking a four-hour membership class. Because Southern Baptist taught me to... See, there, there's a 
he's retiring also. He's named his replacement, which is controversial as well. But in his, um, as he's passing his church along to a new pastor, he the, he shared all these statistics there. Um, in an article, I believe, uh, where he was talking about his ministry, but it didn't include all this thanks to the SBCA. It was just a calculation total of all that he has done. Emphasize the priority of Bible study. We now have 9,173 home Bible studies in homes in 162 Southern California cities. Because Southern Baptists taught me the value of church planting. I already mentioned, we planted 90 in Orange County alone and literally thousands around the world. Because Southern Baptists... I've never seen him look nervous before. He's clearly nervous, which I find odd. ...taught me to honor and love the local church. I've had the privilege for 43 years of training 1.1 million pastors. Now pause, pause, pause for applause. That, sorry, friends. That's more than all the seminaries put together. He has trained more <laughs> pastors than all the seminaries put together. What's training a pastor? Somebody, somebody you knew who you shared a Bible verse with, who became a pastor. What's the credential? What What's the criteria for your training? One point one million pastors. I'm not saying there aren't good pastors out there, but they're probably few and far between if they follow his model of teaching and preaching and leading. I owe you all so much. So I sincerely say thank you, Southern Baptist, for shaping my life. And in closing, I want to ask you to consider a couple questions. You're never going to find another Baptist who agrees with you completely on everything. Uh, sounds like a defense. Doesn't that sound like a... I, I'm not going to say a word. I am most Christ-like when I do not defend myself. Consider these two things. You're not going to agree with everybody. There are Baptist brothers here today who don't believe Jesus died for the whole world. I'm not that bad. Oh, oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not really not that bad. I, all I did was ordain women in my church which the Southern Baptist Convention has been 100% against forever since they started. Uh, I'm not so bad. There are Calvinists who are Southern Baptists. <laughs> uh, he's such a hypocrite. This is hypocrisy right here. But we imagine somehow get along with them. Somehow. So as Western culture grows more dark, more evil, more secular, we have to decide, are we going to treat each other as allies or adversaries? Yeah, look at, look at all the things that I've done. Look at all the things that I've done because the SBC helped me do it. Look at all the things I've done. And now you're going to get rid of me. You're going to sever ways with me when uh, the culture is getting stronger against us. You're going to sever ways ways with me over such a secondary issue that's him making a defense of himself which he said he would not do yeah. and most of the people second since this is the year 2022 that means we are 2022 years all right he goes on to say that he would like to see the southern baptist uh, spread the gospel throughout the entire world before the 2,000-year anniversary of the Great Commission, which is wonderful, um, which we all would like to have happen. And Al Mohler got up and had a response. So we're going to play Al Mohler next. But before I do, let me encourage you to go to btwnews.org btwnnews.org that's my website and please consider clicking on show some love three different ways you can show some love one is via check uh, two is on ko-fi which is my replacement for patreon which booted me or you can give via paypal so three different ways if you appreciate what i'm doing here let's go to al moeller 
Al Mohler speaking from the floor at the uh, convention. He had some things to say. Mr. Chairman, I, I just come to this microphone in the event that it is in order for me to speak. I'm speaking as a messenger of the Third Avenue Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. I served on the committee. All right. If you think he's drunk, he's not drunk. There's uh, uh, evidently there's an echo. Evidently there's an echo in there and it messes with you when you try to speak on the microphone. That brought the Baptist faith and message in 2000 that was overwhelmingly adopted by this convention. My concern is as a churchman, a theologian, and uh, someone who loves this convention, as I know everyone in this room does, if we eventually have to form a study committee over every word in our confession of faith, then we're doomed and we're no longer a confessional people. Dr. Mueller. Okay, so what he's, what he's saying is, what he's saying is, they they told, um, you know, people people were like, hey, you got to get rid of uh, Rick Warren because of his pastor thing, and evidently the committee came back and said, we're going to go study what the word pastor means. We need to go study what the word pastor means because now Rick Warren is saying there's a pastoral calling and there's a pastoral position. And you, and if a woman has the gift of preaching, uh, the gift of pastoring, they can be ordained. So that's what's happened here. And here we have a port of port of order. Okay. Would you stand by, please, just for a second, with all due respect? I will stand by. Thank you. Thank you. They were confused about who was supposed so, to be speaking. Dr. Moeller, would you? Your, your microphone number five, I recognize you again to continue speaking to this. Thank you, sir. Come I certainly here. want to be in order yes, with sir. the rest of this convention. Yes. I appreciate the opportunity. I'll, I'll make this brief. I also appreciate the good work of the Credentials Committee and the spirit in which they bring this. But I am a confessionalist. This is a confessional denomination. We say what we believe in specific words that are the Baptist faith and message. The moment we start to, of necessity, have study committees to decide what the words mean, the words mean what Southern Baptists said in the year 2000. At that time, the word pastor was used by the committee and adopted by the convention because we were told that is the most easily understood word among Southern Baptists for pastoral teaching leadership. I have to hope we still have that much clarity and that churches that use the word pastor mean it. Mr. Chairman, thank you for this opportunity. Okay, so good for Al Mohler standing up and saying that. Good for Al Mohler. We have many issues with Al Mohler here at BTW News, but um, good for him standing up and saying, hey, we all know what a pastor is. Uh, Protesti is putting out articles about Southern Baptist Convention. Put a fork in it. The SBC is done. MSN is uh, giving updates. MSN. Live updates. Southern Baptist Convention formally seeks forgiveness, apologizes to sexual abuse survivors. It's a mess. Like the, the female pastor thing is just just new. Um, but they have had this uh, scandal of s sexual abuse in many churches. There's a lot of good good people in the Southern Baptist Convention who are not guilty of sexual abuse or sex covering up sexual abuse. There's Lord willing, I hope I'm sure there are more that are not guilty than are guilty. But, um, those who even are guilty of cover up are guilty as well. Um, Saddleback Saddleback still Southern Baptist for now after surprise appeal from Rick Warren, and that was the uh, 
the video that that we watched. So here's Vody Balcom on this uh, website that keeps popping up. This is uh, what is this? Um, the Christian Post. Here's uh, here's where we get annoying pop up. God doesn't need the SBC. Vody Balcom warns judgment falling upon the church and secular culture. Let's try to get that in there. There we go. Now I can't. Let me do it this way. Please don't be annoyed. Okay. I'm going to do it this way. No thanks. Two, uh, two of evangelical Christianity's most recognizable preachers are warning the nation's largest Protestant group to resist compromise amid a wave of internal disputes and controversies. Pastor Vody Balcom, Pastors Vody Balcom and John MacArthur were on hand for an event hosted by the Conservative Baptist Network in the run-up to this week's annual meeting of the Southern Baptist Convention in Anaheim, California. In addition to the messages from Balcom and MacArthur, Sunday's event had around 2,000 attendees and featured, featured a panel discussion with candidates endorsed by the Conservative Baptist Network who are running for SBC offices. The Conservative Baptist Network is described as a partnership of Southern Baptists where all generations are encouraged, equipped, and empowered to bring positive Biblical solutions that strengthen the SBC in an effort to fulfill the Great Commission and influence culture. Sounds super good. Sounds really good. It was formed in 2020. <laughs> Brand new group. Uh, probably should have been formed a whole lot longer, long ago. Uh, you know, we won't be able to read it if I do it that way. So let's go back here. Um. <clears throat> It was formed in 2020 for, um, amid growing concerns that the denomination is drifting from biblical orthodoxy towards more social justice theology and wokeism. Balcom, who lost a bid Tuesday to become the next president of the SBC Pastors Conference to a relatively unknown North Carolina pastor. Now, this, that is notable. Vody Balcom is so famous, so well known, and they didn't. He wasn't nominated to be the SBC president of the convention, but to be the president of the pastors' conference, just the pastors' conference. And Vody, who's solid as solid can be, couldn't even get elected to be the pastor of the pastors' conference. And you know, that's just um. That just goes to show how far gone the SBC is. How how many liberal churches and pastors there are in the SBC that Vody Balcom would lose to someone who's relatively unknown. Well, anyway, Vody touched on several topics that have rolled the SBC ranks. Royal, royal, royaled. Uh, SBC ranks, including critical race theory and new revelations about sexual abuse and cover-up within the SBC. He issued, issued a stark reminder about the sovereignty of God in building his kingdom, adding that we recognize that God doesn't need the Southern Baptist Convention. I love the SBC. This is Vody speaking. I've been trained and educated and nurtured by the SBC. I praise God for the SBC. According, uh, um, But hear me say this when when I say that God does not need the Southern Baptist Convention, now we pray that God continues to use the Southern Baptist Convention. Amen. Balcom 52 currently serves as, we all know that. And later on, Balcom says, I recognize that God doesn't even need America, which is true. All this is true. God doesn't need, God, God doesn't need Vody Balcom. <laughs> God doesn't need Vody Balcom. God doesn't need anything. He can get his job. He can get all of his all his will done without us. 
some, uh, let's see, can we get off this page and go here? Okay, here we go. No more popping up. All right, so here's, here's Pastor John. He preached at the Conservative Baptist Network. I didn't realize it was that new, only a couple of years new. Uh, standing room only crowd called to courage and conviction in SBC meeting. And uh, there's quotes from Vody, quotes from Vody, and here's John MacArthur. MacArthur uh, convinced that believers are now, this is at, at that pre-conference conference, <clears throat> convinced that believers are now living in a neo-paganistic world. MacArthur s sought to encourage those in attendance to draw courage from their confidence in Christ. Courage gives birth to confidence, MacArthur said. In fact, it comes from confidence, and it leads to confidence. Courage is born in confidence in the God who called you and the God who empowers you and leads you. If you want courage, you have to have confidence in God. Courage, he explains, is needed for any Christian choosing to follow Christ in a culture that opposes him and his kingdom. Then uh, here's the main quote. The world provides nothing for you to advance the kingdom of God. It offers you nothing. You don't advocate the kingdom. You don't advance the kingdom of light by making an ally of the kingdom of darkness. Friendship with the world, he calls from the scripture, is enmity with God. You're never going to... That's the quote right there. Um, and then... They interviewed other people and had quotes from other speakers. So that is the truth of the matter. God doesn't need the SBC. He doesn't need America. He doesn't need Vody Balcom. He doesn't need John MacArthur. So we don't, don't put too much stock in your big old convention when, you know what, it's falling apart. And we need not get all frustrated and say, oh, no, oh, no, what's going to happen now that the SBC is going completely liberal, ordaining female be women for, to be pastors and critical race theory and social justice and woke wokeism, all amidst uh, sexual assault charges and not only charges, but convictions and investigations and everything. Just a mess. Just a real mess to see what has happened to the SBC. But God is sovereign. God is in control. And Vody po points out, as we all should be reminded, that God doesn't need the SBC. Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching. Did you watch the whole video? I ask this from time to time. If you watch the whole video, please comment and say, hey, Tim, I watched the whole thing. And then give me your thoughts. What do you think? Uh, share this content. Stick around. That other video is coming out tomorrow. Where's that? This one. Okay. You're going to love it. <laughs> You're going to love it. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Till next video, my prayer is that God would bless each and every one of you. Thanks.